and welcome to today's lesson on polygons and other plane figures. It's going to cover topics in the standard 2.3 in geometry and that topic in study island that is called polygons and other plane figures. So this is going to be the second part of two videos that cover that talks about questions in those two topics. And these questions that we're going to look at today are the ones that deal with triangles and quadrilaterals, so three and four sided shapes. And since we're working on these problems, you want to, when you're working these problems, you want to copy the shape down so that you can write on it. And it's just a lot easier to see that information if you're able to just write it into where it is on the shape instead of trying to visualize it in your head. We're far enough in math that you can't be doing it all in your head. So you want to make sure also that you're taking notes and that you're in those notes you're copying down the work and the problems so that you have those to refer to also. And if I go too fast, you can always pause, rewind, and fast forward so that you can stay caught up. Um, and you can also pause at the beginning of a question, work the problem out, see how you do, and then you know um, if you need to look at more examples or maybe you just need a couple of more because you're doing pretty well. Um, but I'm excited that you're here. These questions that we look at today, you're going to see four of those about on the EOI. And let's go ahead and look at our lesson. So hopefully you've studied all these different types of quadrilaterals in your core curriculum. And this is just a review and a way to organize all that information you learned about them. So we have different types of quadrilaterals. We have three main groups, trapezoids, kites, and parallelograms. So a trapezoid has two parallel opposite sides or bases. Non-parallel sides are called legs. So these would be the legs here. And these would be the bases. In the mid-segment, it connects the midpoints of the legs equals half the sum of the bases, and the mid-segment is parallel to the two bases. So those are all the characteristics of a trapezoid that we might need to know in order to solve problems. Now, an isosceles trapezoid is a specific type of trapezoid. It has all these characteristics of a regular trapezoid, plus it has these characteristics in addition. And a sasolized trapezoid are when the legs are congruent. So this would be an isosceles trapezoid. This would be an isosceles trapezoid. This would not because the legs are congruent here. And it has a few other additional characteristics that you can go ahead and read. Um, we also have kites that don't really fall into trapezoids or parallelograms. Tra kites are the consecutive sides are congruent. So you have two sides that touch are congruent, but you don't have the opposite sides being congruent. And then you have these two characteristics of kites also. Another group of quadrilaterals are have are parallelograms. And so parallelograms are when the opposite sides are parallel, congruent, opposite angles are congruent, the consecutive angles are supplementary, and their diagonals are going to bisect each other. So those are all characteristics of parallelograms. When we get into more specific parallelograms, we have rhombi and rectangles. So a rhombi has all the characteristics of a parallelogram, but it also has four congruent sides and the diagonals are perpendicular. So here's an example of a rhombi. Rectangles have all the characteristics of parallelograms, plus they have four right angles and their diagonals are congruent. Now squares, they're super special. They have all the characteristics of parallelograms, rhombi, rectangles, Plus, they have four congruent sides, the diagonals are perpendicular, they have four right angles, and their diagonals are congruent, which some of those, so they're basically taking all the characteristics of a rhombi and a rectangle, and they have both of them. All right, so these are just things that you have to have memorized, you have to have in your head. So um, 
pick your favorite way to help you that helps you remember information, whether it's picturing things in your head, making flashcards, writing them out numerous times. Um, having this information in your head will make you very so much more successful on the EOI than if you didn't. So like I said, you're going to really want to take notes and copy these shapes down. So if you need to pause in order to do that, please do so. And the nice part about having them copied down is when you're told this is a quadrilateral A, B, C, D, I have the angle A, B, E is 32 degrees, then I can just write 32 degrees here. And it's much easier to visualize on paper than it is to keep it all straight in your head. The loss, you make so many just small errors when you try to just keep it all in your head. So we also have the angle AEB is 108 degrees. So I'm going to write 108 degrees by this angle. And it wants to know what is the measure of angle ECD. So E ECD is this angle down here. So I have, I'm going to draw a little question mark there. So I just know that this is a quadrilateral. So the only special thing I know about quadrilaterals is they have a total of 360 degrees. And I also have triangles that the diagonals split the quadrilateral into. And I know a triangle has 180 degrees. So looking at this corner here, I can slowly piece my way over. This is a right angle, it told me by that little box, that's the right angle symbol. So this little angle and this little angle add to 90 degrees. So if I take 90 minus 32, that's going to give me 58. So I now know that this is 58 degrees. All right. I know here that I have, I have a line. And a line is 180 degrees. So I know this part of the line is 108 degrees. So if I take 180 degrees and subtract 108, that leaves me with 72. And I know this angle here is 72 degrees. Okay. So I now know two angles of this little triangle over here. So I can add 72 plus 58, and that's going to give me 130. And I subtract that from 180, that gives me 50 degrees left over for this little angle here. Now I know this 50 degree angle and the angle I'm looking for equal 90 degrees because this is also a right triangle. So if I take that 90 and subtract off the 50, that leaves me with 40 degrees left for the angle that I'm looking for. So my answer is going to be B. There is no way I could have done that without having that shape written down and being able to write in angles I found out as I went. Okay, this next problem, I have a kite, and it tells me that P to R is 16 centimeters, and Q to S is 21 centimeters. And then it also tells me the ratio of QT to TS is 2 to 5. What is the perimeter of the kite? Well, what that ratio means is if I break QT into two pieces, and TS into five pieces, then those pieces will all be congruent. They'll all be equal size. And so here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two plus five is seven, that makes sense. And I know the whole thing is 21. So if I take 21 and divide that into three, or divide that by seven, I get three. So that means each of these little pieces is three. So that means Q to T is 6, and T to S is 15. So that's why this little ratio here is useful. Now, because I know this is a kite, I know that this longer, per, this longer diagonal 
bisects the shorter one here. And so that means if P to R is 16, that means each of these little pieces is 8 and 8. So now, if I want to find the perimeter, though, I know all these little pieces measures, but I don't know the outside. I have to still find those sides measures. But because it's a kite, I also know that this is a right angle, that the diagonals are perpendicular. So that means I have a right triangle in all four places here. So I can use Pythagorean theorem to set up and find my missing sides. So in this one, I have a leg of 6 and a leg of 8. So I have Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And I'm looking for the hypotenuse, the C. So in this triangle, I'm going to have 6 squared plus 8 squared equals C squared. 6 squared is 36, and 8 squared is 64. So I have 36 plus 64 equals C squared. And 36 plus 64 is 100 equals C squared. And then I had to take the square root of both sides to undo the square. The square root of 100 is 10, and that equals C. So that means this side here is 10, and it also means that this side over here is 10 because this triangle has the same length, 6 and 8. So I don't have to solve again for that one. And then I just have to do it again to find my sides down here. And plus we know it's a kite, so we know these two sides are going to be congruent. So when I set it up, it's going to look like this. 8 squared plus 15 squared equals c squared. 8 squared is 64. 15 squared is 225. 225 plus 64 is 289 equals c squared. And then I have to take the square root of both sides as the last step of Pythagorean theorem. That cancels out the square. The square root of 289 is 17, and that equals c. So that means this side is 17 and this side is 17. So my last step to find the perimeter is to add all four sides. So 10 plus 10 plus 17 plus 17, which is 54. So my answer is going to be A. Okay, in this problem, it tells us we have a parallelogram. And once you have it copied down, you can fill in the rest of the angles. So you have angle M. NL is 15 degrees, and you have angle NLM, which is 21 degrees. So it wants to know what is angle OLN. So I'm going to put a question mark there. Because it's a parallelogram, I know that the opposite angles are going to be congruent. So that means here that this little piece is going to be 21 and this little piece is going to be 15. So that gives me an answer of B, 15. And now we're going to look at some problems with triangles. So we had four-sided shapes, now we have three-sided shapes. Um, triangles, they're, if we classify them by their sides, there's three different types. We have scalene triangles which is no sides and no angles are congruent. We have isosceles triangles, where we have two sides that are congruent, and those angles opposite those two sides are also congruent. And we have equilateral triangles, where all three sides are congruent, all three angles are congruent, and those are always be 60 degrees, 60 degrees, and 60 degrees. And then every triangle, whether it's scalene, isosceles, or equilateral, is always going to add to 180 degrees. And another useful theorem we have about triangles is if you can take and extend any of these sides and it creates an exterior angle. And you can do it either direction. And if you want to find the measure of that exterior angle, you're going to add the two interior angles that are furthest away. So that's what this theorem, exterior angle theorem, is talking about. Right, here we have a problem and it says the larger triangle is an isosceles triangle. So this triangle here. 
and I've marked our congruent sides with the congruent marks. Okay, so you know angle Z is 139 degrees, and what is angle W? So this is the one we're looking for. So I'm going to start figuring out what angles I can figure out and see if I can work my way over there. Well, Y and Z are aligned, so that means they add to 180 degrees. So if I take 180 degrees and subtract 139, that's going to leave me with 41. So that means Y is 41 degrees. Okay, this is a right angle, so that angle there is going to be 90 degrees. And I know that there is 180 degrees in any triangle, so this little triangle, I'm going to find that X, I'm going to take 90 plus 41, which is 131, and then I'm going to take 180 and subtract that 131 to see what's left over for my X, and that's going to be 49 degrees. And now, since it's a isosceles triangle, I know that this height bisects this top angle here. So if X is 49 degrees, W is 49 degrees. So my answer is C. All right, this one says two angles of a triangle have measures 35 degrees and 65 degrees. Which of the following could not be a measure of an exterior angle of the triangle? Well, to find exterior angle, I add the two interior furthest away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and find out what that third interior angle could be. So there's 180 degrees in a triangle. So I want to see what's left over when I add 35 plus 65. That gives me 100. So I subtract that from 180. And then that leaves me with 180 degrees. So that means my third angle is is 80 degrees. So if I add any two of those, that's going to give me a measure of one of the exterior angles. So if I add 35 plus 80, if I add another pair, 35 plus 65, and then the last pair, 65 plus 80. And then those sums are 115. 100, and 145. So those are my three exterior angles. Those are the ones I can have. So which one of these is not up here? Well, that leaves me B, 80, is not a, one of the three possibilities that I found. So my answer is B. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something new.